Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Danka Praktik. If you have a garden or greenhouse, you have to have some sort of irrigation system. Without a regular water supply, the plants in an outside garden are at the mercy of the weather conditions which can easily lead to your garden getting totally ruined. In a greenhouse, an irrigation system is a must-have since it's closed up and rain can get to the plants. This video will focus on the drip irrigation system as it is one of the least complicated systems to use and install but is also pretty affordable. We use this system in our greenhouse and especially recommend it to gardening beginners. So stay tuned. Danke Praktik. If you want to see how we built our greenhouse from top to bottom, click on the link in the corner of this video or on the link in the description. The main parts of the irrigation system are, in general, the water supply, which is in this case a 400 liter barrel, which is about 106 gallons. This doesn't have to be a barrel, it can be some other water supply. The barrel is better since it lets the water warm up so the cold water doesn't shock the plants. Stand for the barrel. The barrel must be elevated to achieve water pressure. The higher it's set up, the stronger the pressure will be. We have a metal stand as it endures weight much better. In our case, the height is about a meter and a half. A silicone hose. In our case, we used a silicone hose to connect the barrel and the main pipe. This way, we can install the barrel wherever it's convenient. The main pipe. The main pipe is made out of polyethylene and has thicker walls. It serves as a main distributor of water for the whole system. On one side, there is a connector for the silicone hose. On the other, the pipe is sealed with a plastic cap. The pipe should be as long as the width of your garden or greenhouse. With gardens, it can be longer. With greenhouses, it has to be a bit shorter so it can fit inside. Just don't make the hose too short since then you may have problems with adjusting the valves to the rows. The valves. Two kinds of valves are used here. The main valve that lets the water out of the barrel and valves on the main pipe which with you can regulate the water flow to each row in the garden. Know that for installing the valves on the main pipe you'll need a puncture tool or a drill tool to make the holes for the valves. After this, once the holes are made, rubber seals are installed and the valves are just pushed in. Connectors. There are various kinds of connectors and what you'll need all depends on the system you have. For connecting the barrel, silicone hose and the main pipe, we used plastic snip-on connectors for more convenience. For the main pipe, you can buy end caps and fittings made specifically for this purpose. Last, you have the tubing. These tubes are flimsy, perforated on one side and usually come in a big roll. They are attached to the valves with a simple system. You insert the tube and turn the plastic cap screw onto the tube. When installing the tubes, know that they should be a bit longer than the rows since they have to be tied up at the ends. We used zip ties for tying and it worked great. More importantly, turn them onto the right side so the water can properly come out. Know that these tubes are meant to be replaced every couple of seasons since they get brittle and crack. This leads to spills that are hard to spot especially in bigger gardens or greenhouses. All of this is sort of a Lego system if you will, which is very practical since you can adjust the whole system to your needs. There are additional filters you can buy, various kinds of valves, connectors and else. It all depends on what you need and want. In our case, we have the basic system. Our recommendation is when you install the whole system, connect a garden hose and let some water through the system and see if everything works. Especially do this if the system has been previously used, this will flush out any dirt or filth that may cause future clogs and problems. Also, check that the system is properly sealed and that there are no leaks. Leaks cause a problem since some of the plants don't get the water they need and this of course affects the overall yield. When winter and lower temperatures come, best to remove the whole system unless you have a heated greenhouse. If you leave it during winter, the water may freeze and damage parts of the system. How does the drip irrigation system work? The whole drip irrigation system with the barrel functions thanks to the free fall of water. 
the water goes from the barrel to the main pipe and through the valves into the tubing. Fill the barrel up with water as much as you need. We fill it always to the top and leave the water at least 24 hours to warm up a bit. Once the water is okay, the main valve is opened and the water goes through the silicone hose into the main pipe. From there it goes to the tubing and waters the plants. As mentioned, the water flow can be adjusted on the main valve on the barrel or on the valves on the main pipe. You'll know that the irrigation system works if, when you let the water flow, you see damp stains around the plants and in the plant rows. The most important thing to know is that you have to have enough pressure in the system so all the plants can get enough water. Once again, if you're using a barrel, make sure it has enough height. More height means better pressure. This type of irrigation system is easy to install. It takes us about half an hour to an hour at most to set it up. Also, the whole system costs, at least in our country, a couple of hundred euros, which is pretty affordable. We definitely recommend it, especially for smaller gardens and greenhouses. For bigger ones, you'll need a more professional system that can produce more water pressure and supply. So that's it for this time. We hope the video helps. Please like and subscribe. It's a huge help for what we're doing. Thanks for watching and thanks for your time.